My name is Hermann Toplak. I am professor of internal medicine in the Medical University of Graz in Austria. And I am currently the president of the European Association for the Study of Obesity. The European Association for the Study of Obesity is dealing with all aspects of obesity from prevention to treatment and we are also dealing with patient organizations supporting patients' ideas and wishes. When we are going to the current anti-obesity treatments, diet and exercise are fully the basis for the treatment of overweight and obesity wherever possible. Additionally to that, care providers should be able to provide a wide spectrum of clinically proven treatment options in different combinations. Such options would be individual or group lifestyle modification, lifestyle modification including dietary supplements, addition of anti-obesity drugs and addition of bariatric surgery. Why do we need pharmacotherapy for obesity? There is a significant need for non-invasive treatment options to bridge the gap between lifestyle modification and surgical interventions. With lifestyle modifications, we reach only 3 to 4% loss in body weight. With surgical procedures, beyond 15 or 20%, up to 40, 50% of body weight. And so there is a gap of about 10%, which could be suitable for obesity drugs. Pharmacotherapy should be considered as an adjunct to diet and exercise and recommended for patients with a BMI above 30 or a BMI above 27 with an obesity-related comorbidity like hypertension, diabetes or hyperlipidemia. Responses to pharmacotherapy will then achieve at least 5% of weight loss or at least 3% in those with diabetes and then the treatment should be continued. Treatment, on the other hand, should be discontinued in non-responders. Unfortunately, since 1999, there was only one drug available in Europe, which was a lipase inhibitor, reducing triglyceride absorption and thus leading to less triglyceride absorption and less calorie uptake. In the last years, some drugs tried to come to the market, which are now available in the US, but not in Europe because they were rejected by the European Medicines Agency. This year in March, two new drugs got approval by the European Medicines Agency. Liraglutide 3 milligrams, which is an injectable drug, and a naltrexone buprotion combination, a tablet with different dosages. In the past, the cardiovascular safety issues with many of the drugs approved and later have been withdrawn have caused concern in the European Medicines Agency and the regulators look now very carefully and critically to the new drugs. But associated with that, requirements have been done or at least desired that we should have long-term cardiovascular safety trials before approval with all new drugs and that would restrict the availability of these agents for years and stifle the further advances in the field. In Europe, such mandatory requirement for pre-approval cardiovascular outcome studies would be problematic as there is currently a few treatments available. To allow fast access to new therapies, an approval decision should take into consideration whether a drug has clear and beneficial effects on surrogates of cardiovascular risk in the registration trials. So, what would we like for the future? We would hope that the European Commission, the European Parliament, will work together with scientific society and potentially patient groups to ensure that new obesity treatment options are more readily available. Within the experts, we have to adapt the risk-benefit model to the approval and regulatory process. If we then are successful in the management of obesity, we will block a key progression route for many chronic diseases like diabetes, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, and following that, cardiovascular disease.